Hi, my name is Ralph Krola, Stephen, Minnesota. I graduated in 1959 and I went in the Air Force February 2nd, 1960. After Lackland Air Force Base, I went... Okay, when, when you went into the Air Force, did you... you went up from Stephen? Yes. And how... Fargo. How'd you get to... Okay, I ended up going to Fargo, and from Fargo we flew to Lackland Air Force Base, or San Antonio, or wherever. And after eight weeks, I went to Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota. Which so was, that was basic training you went through? Yes, sir. And what was basic... Tra I haven't interviewed too many from the Air Force. What was basic training like? Mainly marching. That's about what the main thing was. But then in the afternoons, we'd always end up with classes of some kind. And uh, inspections all the time, it seemed like. And... Like in the Army, you went to right, did you go to rifle ranges, gas chambers, stuff uh, like that? Yes, we had the rifle range, but the gas deal Two ended, gas. ended up that uh, they canceled it at the last minute, which was a blessing. I didn't. So you liked that? Uh, yeah, yes, we did. And, uh, uh, you know, typical basic training, mainly marching and, well, whatever else they do. Shots and all that yeah, good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, shots, yes, sir. Is there any testing or? I do believe that we had tests, yes, but uh, okay. yeah, I guess that's what we found, found out which field we were going to be going into. I went into finance and accounting and... Uh, well, well, from, from like, did you do your AIT there too, your no. advanced training? No, I didn't go to uh, any tech school or anything like that. Uh, afterwards, they sometimes they send you to Amarillo or someplace, but... Uh, you didn't have any of that? No, I went directly to South Dakota. South Dakota. That's where you were stationed, was South Dakota? Uh, yes, I was there for about two and a half years. And... Uh, we're at in South Dakota? Uh, Rapid City. Rapid City, okay. Yeah, that's very nice. And from there, in uh, July of 62, I ended up going to Guam, Anderson Air Force Base on Guam which is a tropical paradise, but uh, it never got above 80, it never got below 70, but it rained every day. And uh, you just kept on walking and the sun would come back out and you'd dry out before you'd get to where you're going. How long were you in Guam? Uh, 18 months. 18 months? Yes. And it rained almost every day? Yeah, the humidity is 100%. And in November of 62, we had Typhoon Karen that came in there and it literally wrecked everything and but we knew it was coming and everything and I my bunk was uh, right next to the wooden louvers and uh, uh, a stone ended up hitting the third louver from the top and you know, of course electricity was out and the rain ended up going up to the ceiling and as it went in the ceiling it kept on moving so pretty soon it was over my bed and I got wet but I ended up crawling on top of the lockers and I went to sleep through the whole thing. And we're in concrete barracks, so we're... Nobody got hurt or anything else, but it, uh, I have books that I gave to David Sunstall, and he's got them. I don't know if he's put them in the museum or if he has them. But there was straw that went right through telephone poles. That's how 210 mile an hour. You have pictures of this? Oh, yeah. And it was well, I don't have pictures. I got the books that I bought. Oh, okay. And I ended up giving it to him, I was going to send them back to Guam, but uh, and I let David, no, I'll take them, I'll take them, I'll take them, so, but that was okay. And uh, anyway, I came, I extended nine months, I thought maybe I'd get Grand Forks Air Force Base, but I ended up getting Lincoln, Nebraska, and I decided that it, uh, it was maybe time for me to get out. That's when there was an Air Force Base in Lincoln, Nebraska. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and then afterwards, they, Locked it up, I guess. They had fighter jets there for a while, didn't they? Uh, it was a SAC base, but I really don't know. So uh, that's about all I can tell you. And then I got out. And do you want me to tell you the rest of my story? Or yes. This? Keep, oh, keep, okay. keep going. Well, I, I got out and uh, then I ended up uh, becoming a bartender over at the Legion over in Grafton. That's when they had a Legion and they were doing fantastic business. I was there for one year and then I went over to manage the American Legion over in St. Thomas, North Dakota. And after about one year I got fired. So 
I uh, lost my job. I came back to Stephen and I got hired by my cousin as a butcher over in, at the grocery store and I was there for 32 years. And then he finally sold. What grocery store, store was that? Krolox Supermarket, store. yeah. Okay. And in 99 he sold the store. And, uh, because at that time there were two grocery stores here, correct? Well, there were, there were three at one time, or okay. maybe four, but uh, there was a Red Owl, a Super Value, and, and the Heart Store. And the Red Owl locked up first, <clears throat> and then after a while, Super Value locked up, and maybe we were the last one. And uh, Well, after uh, 99, I, I still had a part-time job as being a bartender. So I did that job for 40 years. Where at? Uh, I was over in Grafton, St. Thomas, uh, Ardile, and the liquor store in Stephen. And it ended up that uh, my wife became the manager of the American Legion in Stephen, and uh, her and I ran the place for 12 and a half years. And uh, we made him some money. Yep. And uh, It's well known. Let's see, in 99, and then in 2005, I ended up getting a job over at Super One in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I was there for 10 years, and that was sold to, uh, I can't even remember. Anyway, then they took over, and I was there for three years, and then they ended up locking up. And so then I went to Hugo's, and I'm still there. And I've been in the meat business for over 50 years, so... So you know a cut of meat when you see one? Well, I know all the cuts. Uh, I, we used to do a, kind of a lot of uh, sides of beef in Stephen. So when, the, you know, come fall, a lot of farmers would fill their freezers with a half a beef. Or, sure. Or you know, I even cut up deer and things. Is there, anything, is there anything about your military service that you wish you had done different or...? Oh, yes. Uh, when I was on Guam, I ended up taking a civil service test for being the postal clerk. And I passed it, and then I put in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and they called me in for an interview or something over on Guam, and I never went to it. That, uh, I mean, that's kind of one of the things I made a mistake. I should have went there, and maybe I'd have had a different career or a different field. Being a postal clerk, I probably could have retired. I'm still working. So your your time in the service was was good or Oh yes. It was educational, very. While I was on Guam, we took R and R's. We went to Japan for ten days, this roommate and I. And then about two months later we went to Hong Kong. We were supposed to be there for three days. After two days a, a, hur a hurricane was coming and of course when we got there there was a drought. And it stunk as soon as we landed. It just, you know, and it was surprising. People would be out in the street with their little sticks and they were making their supper out in the streets. And the streets and everything were very nice and everything else. They were, you know, they weren't gravel or nothing like that. They were tarred or paved or whatever. But the people were out there still trying to make their meal with a kettle and some whatever they were making, you know, and it, it still was a little backwards, you yeah. know. But so the, the what, was your, what was your rank when you... I was E4. E4, okay. And... Uh, so you served over four years. Yes, sir. Four years, nine months, is that... Four years, eight months, and 29 days. <laughs> I got out early because it was supposed to have been on a Saturday, so they got just it on a Friday. Yeah. And... Uh, the nightlife in Hong Kong, they had real nice nightlife. I mean, they'd have dancers that came in from uh, who knows what. They put on a nice show and everything else. And, uh, it was educa very educational. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with going in the military. I mean, if you get to travel a little. I mean, some people got stuck in South Dakota for four years. Never went nowhere. I mean, right. oh yes, okay, there's the Badlands and Deadwood and Spearfish and a lot of things to see in South Dakota, but you don't go any farther than probably 50 miles in the radius. And so it was, an exp it was a good experience for you? Oh yeah, it's, and what are you gonna say? You, you come back with all these memories and... Yep. 
Well, Ralph, I thank you for doing this interview. You're welcome. Thank you for your service. Well, thank you.